It's been a while since we've talked about any OG beauty drama, but luckily for us, this week was actually pretty messy for the beauty influencers. From Jaclyn Hill trying to rewrite history on her podcast tour, to Manny MUA and Laura Lee being cancelled over a change they made to their podcast. It's a mess, so let's get into it. As you guys know, Jaclyn Hill made the decision after closing up all of her businesses to leave Florida and move out to LA. This move confused a lot of people because typically influencers tend to move to LA during the peak of their careers, but Jaclyn never did. She stayed in Florida through it all, which is why this move felt so shocking to some of her fans. We are moving across the country just a little over a week away. I know you guys have a ton of questions. But regardless, Jaclyn does seem to be thriving in LA. LA, especially when it comes to hanging out with other influencers. She's been seen with James Charles, she did Manny and Laura's podcast, and just this last week, she did controversial family influencer Avery Wood's podcast. Now, Jacqueline is being called out for apparently trying to rewrite history on this podcast, so we're gonna go through it and see what she has to say, starting off with her lipsticks. Avery started the conversation by saying how she bought two of Jacqueline's lipsticks and claimed that hers had no fuzzies in them. Avery said that hers were totally fine, which then prompted Jacqueline to claim only 2% of customers actually received defective fuzzy lipsticks. I was shocked when all of that came out. Yeah, that because was a dark, dark Because dark. I had them. And, and so I was fine. like, I just don't get it. 2%. It was 2% that were defective. Okay. So... To think about how loud the internet is, is actually um, insane. Yeah. And well, that also it's was your... a learning lesson. Which we just know isn't true. Jacqueline tried to say that back in 2019 as well, but the proof was there with just how many people were posting pictures of their fuzzy lipsticks and holes and bumps in them, and just how many influencers were even receiving product that looked like it had a science experiment growing inside of it. Jacqueline then went on to say that she had no idea that her lipsticks would have turned out that way, and if she did have a clue, obviously she wouldn't have released them. You're producing so many units it's impossible to nail down the 2%. And I also know how long you worked on the line mm -hmm. that I think mm -hmm. people aren't thinking in their head, like, if you knew, of course you wouldn't release it. Which we also know isn't exactly true. Marlena still had warned Jacqueline about the lab that she was planning on working with and specifically told her that they didn't have good quality control and Jacqueline, or I should say Morphe, didn't listen. Which brings me to this next point. Jacqueline brought up just how much money she lost over the lipsticks. She said millions of dollars were made and then she had to turn around and give every single penny back. Who would do this? Like, because at the end of the day, I ended up giving a full refund, right? I didn't make one penny off of that, mm -hmm. which was a really hard hit because millions of dollars were made on that day. Yeah. Millions. And then I gave every single dollar back. But she fails to mention how it wasn't even her money that was backing these lipsticks. Morphe's name was on every single purchase order from the lab, and that was exposed during the form of bankruptcy. Jacqueline is also trying to claim that she actually caught people lying about having fuzzies in their lipsticks, and she's not talking about customers. She's talking about influencers. Jacqueline said influencers were making videos about her lipsticks, jumping on the bandwagon for views, and apparently later apologized to her and admitted to lying. A lot of people who lied about it, a lot of people that behind the scenes I actually caught red-handed lying, which I would never name names, but there were some people out there who made videos that straight up lied. I actually got apologies for some of those lies later mm -hmm. because those videos were getting so many views. It was like the thing to jump on the bandwagon. And a lot of people are thinking Jacqueline may be talking about raw beauty Christy. We all remember the microscope video that Christy did that showed the close up of how gross the lipsticks look. And that video got millions of views and pretty much made Jacqueline's lipsticks go from a drama story over on our corner of the internet to a viral headline. I'm sure Jacqueline didn't love that Christy made that video. And we know that because Jacqueline has actually shaded Christy for her video in the past. Okay, y'all, this is blending out very nicely. And I know that he says like, it's crease proof, it's all of that. And I know people will do the most. I mean, literally people will pull out microscopes. We've been there, okay? Jacqueline also said that around the time she launched her lipsticks, there were also several other brands that had launched that year and all their products also had white fuzzies in them, but no one cared because everyone was focused on her fuzzies. Here's the tea is there were several other brands in 2018 that launched lipsticks with the exact same issues, but none of them were being aired because everyone was so focused on mine. I'm not gonna say the name of the brands, but two brands were 
huge brands. Okay. And I personally got them in PR covered in fuzzies. But she nearly had another white fuzzy incident and the way that she found out about it seemed to be pretty stressful. Shortly after the whole lipstick disaster calmed down a little bit, Jacqueline went on to launch highlighters for holiday. And when she was having her launch party for the highlighters, she got a text from a close friend of hers claiming that her highlighter had white fuzzies in them. Here's a little inside story. At my launch party, for those highlights. Mm -hmm. I had my launch party in LA. Okay. Another influencer called me and was like, I just opened up my PR package and there's a fuzzy in the highlight. Mm -hmm. This person shall not be named just because I need to be careful. There was actually a fuzzy. So they sent me a video of it and there's like a little fuzzy coming out of like the corner of the pan. And I was like in the middle of my launch party, lost my mind. And here I was about to gift like 80 PR packages to all these influential people here in LA. Oh my God. They did not find one, not one fuzzy. It was just that one person. Whoa. Mm -hmm. I know, I know. So everything worked out for her in the end, but could you imagine the state of the beauty community if Jacqueline's redemption launch also had the same issues as the lipsticks? It would have been chaos. But overall, a lot of comments under this video are accusing Jacqueline of completely trying to rewrite history. One person said, Objectively speaking, as someone who followed Jacqueline for a long time and whose first expensive makeup item as a 14-year-old was champagne pop, so many things she said in this episode are just not true. We did know about the lab being faulty. Marlena Stell literally told her, If you worked so hard on the lipsticks, why wasn't there adequate quality control? The lipsticks weren't only fuzzy and had holes, but there were literal scratchy plastic balls in them. None of that excuses it. She should have done better because she was a millionaire developing a product she was going to sell to people that made her a millionaire. You're not a chemist, sure, but your name and face is attached to the product, so how was there no quality control? People calling you out for lies, like lying about your palate being vegan, lying about the production of your products, lying about sponsorships and paid links is not okay. I don't like how the interviewer is not being critical. The only thing this episode showed me is that Jacqueline still isn't able to take accountability in her part in the failure of her own brand launch, even when it was a literal hazard to its customers. Only 2% is still thousands of people with your huge launch, and that is not okay and not excusable. It wasn't a hate train when the people who were criticizing you were literally your customers. So luckily, there are some people who can see right through it. Moving on and sticking with the theme of the OG beauty YouTuber days, we need to talk about Manny Amule and Laura Lee. As I'm sure you guys know, Manny and Laura have their own podcast called Full Coverage, and they've been going strong at it for a few years now. People seem to really enjoy it, but recently they made a change that landed them in hot water with their audience. For as long as I can remember watching their podcast, they've always had this set that had this cement background, this cute little pink neon sign, some nice decorations. It felt really fitting to their podcast. It didn't feel too set-like, and in my opinion, it was perfect. But of course, change can be good, and change is what they did. They took a week off and redid their entire set. We went from this to this. And it's safe to say their audience was not loving the changes. Many comments said that it felt like they were podcasting in a waiting room for like a plastic surgeon's office. People were complaining about the lighting, the awkward layout. I mean, pretty much every single comment under their first episode back was about the new set. Some of the top comments are, I can't lie, it feels like I'm watching y'all doing a podcast at my doctor's office. It's pretty, but it doesn't match your guys' fun personality. Feels too serious. The way I thought you were in a dentist or plastic surgeon's office. Guys, I love you so, so much, which is why I must say the new transformation is giving nail salon. And then my favorite comment, which says, ZocDoc must have sponsored the setup transformation because I feel like I'm in a doctor's waiting room. So people weren't necessarily being mean, they were just being brutally honest. At the end of the day, it's the audience who has to sit there for like over an hour and watch an episode, so it's important that the vast majority of people enjoy the set. Unfortunately, it sounds like some major money was spent on this new design. Manny and Laura said that they had a designer custom make everything for them, and they were clearly very happy with how it turned out. Do you notice anything, anything different? different? Baby, the Bro. elevation! That it just elevation. keeps going. Um, 411 Studio is the interior design company. They just... They turn the whole thing out. Dude, they turn okay. the party. They, they turn, turn it the party out. out. It is Look so at the elevated. Sign, dude. I know this is metal. 
custom made metal signage for us custom made wooden shelving vibes this is a major transformation for us it we've really been is. wanting to do this but this was like a major investment for us yes. so you know it's we had to cheap. give yeah it wasn't cheap okay we had to give our podcast time to grow and to mm -hmm. make this happen so huh? obsessed i am and obsessed. i love this sign like there's no like light we don't have to turn it on like it just has this glow and it looks great. It looks so cool. Yeah. Now here's the thing. Manny and Laura bulk film episodes. So that meant the next two episodes were filmed before they saw anyone's feedback. And the comments were still talking about how much they love the old set compared to the new one. It wasn't until this week's episode where Manny and Laura finally got the chance to address the set. And I gotta say, I was not expecting them to react in the way that they did. They were really not happy with the feedback that they were getting from their audience. They said that they didn't read the comments once they saw that people were being negative about it, they felt like it was all just haters commenting, and overall, they made it clear that they didn't care what anyone had to say about it. I have never been like more disappointed by our comment section for something so dumb mm -hmm. in my life. You would have thought- I was shocked. We did something crazy. Yes. And because the camera angle was off- The lighting was off. And the lighting was off, you would have thought we burned a city to the ground. A hundred percent. I was like, kind of floored i was too i was actually really Very shocked disappointed. really disappointed i was like this is not giving full fam but if you're starting to like be like a bitch about something it's not constructive it's not it's you're just being a bitch to be a bitch i'm gonna be very transparent manny told me the comments were bad and i didn't really read them See, neither did i after i i'm not Cleared. kidding you still haven't looked since then well then they're talking to each other, I fear. Uh, uh, then go ahead. Fortunately, with the internet, as we've known for many years, there's no space for learning. Or improvement. You ha or improvement. However, I am so proud of this space, and no mm. matter how many neg negative comments, like, I stand strong. I am so proud of this space. Same. I'm so proud of the money that we put into uh -huh. it. I see the elevation of this podcast, Same. and no amount of negativity will steal that thief of joy. They will not be the mm -hmm. thief of joy to me. Mm -hmm. Like, when I saw that, I was like, like, and okay. the sky is blue. <laughs> the sky is anyway. blue. And here's the thing. I get being defensive, especially when you've spent so much money redoing something that was supposed to be an upgrade, but the way they addressed it definitely caught me by surprise, and I'm not alone in that. All their comments are talking about how they didn't expect them to have this reaction. One person said, FYI, the intro is a whole 17 minutes of them telling us how much they don't care about our opinion as an audience. It's wild because I think most of us are being genuine from a place of love and honesty that it just didn't look right. I remember you asking your audience, how do we like the new setup? We were giving constructive feedback, not canceling you. Cancel you? That wasn't what was going on. The majority of people were literally just agreeing with each other in the comments that the new space looked like a corporate office slash medical spa. You may have interpreted it as mean, but people were literally just saying their opinions. I didn't read one mean comment. Full fam were lightheartedly joking about the new setup. I think your guys' response was a bit harsh when you guys were the ones that asked us, the audience, what we thought about it. And I have to agree. I know it can be so hard to get criticism, especially on something you probably spent a good amount of money on, but the audience opinion does matter. They're the ones watching the episode every single week, so I would say their opinion is pretty important. The funny thing is, when they took their break while they were working on the new setup, they did one episode at Laura's house, and that episode was actually so well received. Everyone commented on how cozy the background felt, people were saying it felt like you were just sitting at a table talking to a good friend and that setup was free. It just goes to show you, sometimes less is more, but hopefully Laura and Manny can take the criticism on board and maybe just make a few changes to make everyone happy. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about everything down below. What do you think about Jacqueline trying to rewrite history with this new generation of influencers that she's now friends with? And what do you think about Manny and Laura's new setup and how they responded? Let me know, and I'll see you next time.